Hi, folks, it's me again, and I just wanted to talk about baking soda. As you know, I talk about this a lot, but I like to live a simple, higher quality of life. I like to live... I like to live on simplicity and purity. So, in this video, we're going to talk about baking soda. And oh, all of the endless uses for baking soda. <laughs> so, one of the big things that I use baking soda with is whitening my teeth. I use Arm & Hammer baking soda toothpaste. And there's two of these toothpastes that I usually use. The first one is Arm & Hammer Complete Care. The second one is Arm & Hammer Essentials Whiten and Strengthen. I wanted to try the Healthy Teeth and Gums, but I can't find it anywhere. Why do they even make it if it's never going to be in the damn stores, but whatever. You really think I'm going to order it online and pay twice as much because you're going to hide the shipping into the total cost of the toothpaste? You think I'm stupid? Like, this toothpaste is $4 in a store and it's like 8 to $10 online, but you're going to have the nerve to say free shipping? You really think I'm that stupid? Because I'm not that stupid. I am busy. I'm busy. Do you forget it? Those are the two toothpastes I use. One of the big things I use for baking soda. Arm and Hammer Complete Care and Arm and Hammer Essentials Whiten and Strengthen. Because the first ingredient, as you know, is baking soda. And the thing that I like about even the conventional Arm and Hammer toothpaste, I mean, I've talked about this in previous videos when I was doing my toothpaste binge talking about toothpaste. I made like six videos talking about toothpaste. But one thing that I really like about the conventional because the Arm & Hammer Complete Care is your typical conventional toothpaste but it's actually pretty high quality because there's none of that stuff in it that I don't really want to have in my toothpaste. There's no artificial colors. It doesn't even have titanium dioxide which was surprising but it's like why would they put that in there because the first ingredient is baking soda. And baking soda is already naturally white, so the toothpaste is already naturally white from the baking soda. So, there's only two minor ingredients in the conventional Arm & Hammer that I don't really like that much. And first one is obviously the artificial sweetener, the sodium saturin. I don't really care for that. The only kind of, the only kind of sweeteners that I like to have is xylitol and stevia. Those are the only two sweeteners I like to have. And the xylitol is my personal favorite because it can fight cavities. Because it, it starves off cavity-causing bacteria. It helps remineralize your teeth because it makes you produce more spit. And when you coat enough xylitol on your teeth, it pretty much, like, plaque and cavity-causing bacteria can't even stick to your teeth. Like, it literally slides off. Because they can't do anything. Like, they can't do anything with the xylitol, so they, they end up dying off. Xylitol ends up making all the bacteria die off. And it gives it also a hard time to even stick to your teeth. It just slides off when there's a lot of xylitol on your teeth. So that's why I'm always chewing a lot of xylitol-flavored gum. And I always like to have... I usually like to have xylitol in my toothpaste. And that's one of the reasons why... I've been having toothpaste tablets because with most, the majority of toothpaste tablets I've seen, xylitol is always either the first or the second ingredient. So that's another good thing. Brush your teeth with xylitol toothpaste. I prefer toothpaste tablets if you want the highest xylitol content. And then you just let it sit for like 10 minutes before you rinse it out. And then it really lets it sit in there and it gets your mouth really watering and it helps strengthen your enamel. That's why, like, I don't know why I've never had a cavity in my entire life. Even back when I was a little kid and I was eating a lot more candy. And like throughout my teen years when I would go like three days at a time without brushing my teeth. I, I, just, I just, I don't know, maybe I got lucky. 
But now, usually, not always, but usually I'll brush my teeth twice a day. I'll brush once with a toothpaste tablet when I wake up, and then I'll brush again before I go to bed with a regular toothpaste. <clears throat> I've been using Hello Juicy Grape, oh, and yes, it has xylitol in it. Both my toothpastes, all of my toothpaste I currently have, Colgate Zero has xylitol, the Hello Juicy Grape has xylitol, and the Hello Toothpaste tablets have xylitol. Uh, well, that has xylitol too, the highest xylitol of any of my toothpastes. I still want to try those native toothpaste tablets because they're even higher quality than the Hello Toothpaste tablets. They're two dollars more, as if. Like, you think these toothpaste tablets are expensive enough, but no, these native toothpaste tablets are $2 more. And, but it's, it's for a good reason, because it has even higher quality ingredients. It has xylitol as the first ingredient, so it has a higher xylitol content. And they do have a foaming ingredient, it's a really mild foaming ingredient. So I, I still want to try that out and see how well the native toothpaste tablets foam. Because if it has a foaming ingredient, you'd think it would suds a little bit. The Hello Toothpaste tablets don't foam at all. So like when you're brushing your teeth, and then when you like start to get ready to spit it out, it just feels like you're drooling, because it's it just looks like drool. Like there's practically no foaming at all. It, like it's a little bit thick, because there's a couple different thickeners in it, but there's no, it's, there's no foam. Anyway, I digress. Back on the topic of baking soda. So either way, with the Arm & Hammer Complete Care, knowing that it's a conventional toothpaste, meaning that it's kind of like all of the other toothpastes that you see cluttering up the shelf at the grocery store, all these toothpastes that usually have like lower quality ingredients, it's just like the basic stuff to get the job done. But for a conventional toothpaste, it's actually pretty high quality. Because the only two ingredients, the sodium saturin, you know, artif the sodium saturin and the laurel sulfate. The laurel sulfate isn't even really that big of a deal, honestly, because the Complete Care has two foaming ingredients. And the laurel sulfate is at the very end of the list. The other mild foaming ingredient is, for, is up the list right after the laurel sulfate. So there's a little bit more of the mild foaming ingredient. So knowing that the laurel sulfate is at the very bottom of the list, the very end, it just goes to show that there's not really much of the laurel sulfate in there in the first place. So that's not really that big of a deal. I mean, I prefer to avoid that ingredient in my toothpaste and my soap altogether. But knowing that in the Arm & Hammer Complete Care, that it's just at the very ass end of the list, so there's such little of it to begin with, the Arm & Hammer Complete Care is actually a pretty damn good toothpaste. And I like the taste too. But at the end of the day, I would still want to go with the Arm & Hammer Essentials toothpaste because it doesn't have those two ingredients that I don't really want to see in the toothpaste. And I don't mind, the taste is pretty similar too. It tastes kind of salty. The salty flavor on the Essentials toothpaste is, it's a bit stronger. Like you can definitely taste it more you can test taste the flavor noticeably more compared to the complete care and the thing that i don't really like very much about the essentials is that sometimes not all the time but sometimes the arm and hammer essentials leaves a kind of bitter salty aftertaste that can last like 10 minutes sometimes no matter how well i wash out my mouth i still have this this slightly bitter, slightly salty aftertaste. Like, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's just, I don't really like it that much. But, I still, I still use it anyway because I use Arm & Hammer for the whitening. Because I personally like using baking soda for whitening my teeth. It's really, it's always been one of my personal favorites for whitening teeth. It removes stains, it neutralizes the pH in your mouth, it, it it fights bacteria. It does all kinds of stuff. It get, it fights acids that corrode your teeth enamel. It's always been a good ingredient. Like baking soda overall has always been a really good ingredient. Like just an overall really good, high quality, natural, and simple thing that you can have endless uses for. And toothpaste 
is just one of those things. One of many things that you can use with baking soda. What is that over there? I thought that thing was closed. Where are people driving in there for? Anyway, back on topic. We're talking about baking soda, damn it. So yeah, baking soda to whiten your teeth. You can just you can even use plain old baking soda out of a carton if you want to. Just pour some baking wet your toothbrush and pour a little bit of baking soda on your toothbrush. And brush your teeth in the middle of the day just to freshen your breath and kill the bacteria and give your teeth a quick whiten. I mean, I've only done that a couple times. Personally, I'd rather just use Arm & Hammer toothpaste because they formulate the baking soda into an actual toothpaste. So it would just make more sense to just grab some Arm & Hammer toothpaste for the whitening if you want to use baking soda. But there's a lot of other stuff you can use with baking soda. You can also use it to clean surfaces. Like I was talking about this with the Castile soap, where you basically could put a little bit of Castile soap into a water bottle and spray the surfaces and just wipe off the surfaces. You can do that with baking soda too. You put some baking soda, like, it depends on the size of the spray bottle that you're using. If it's just like a standard bottle, a standard spray bottle, then I don't know, you put like two or three, two or three spoonfuls of baking soda and mix that into some water in a water bottle. Just shake it up really well. And then spray it on to the countertops. Spray it on the stove. You can spray it on the sink. Spray it on a bunch of random stuff. And then just wipe it off. <laughs> and it would be, that's one of things you can do with baking soda. I'm spacing off again, damn it. Whenever I talk this much, I just start like forgetting where I'm even going with this. But yeah, put the baking soda, put some baking soda into a water bottle, shake it up really good. Spray it on some countertops. And then wipe that down. And that could be a way, a natural way, non-toxic way to clean some countertops because it's good at getting rid of bacteria and it's just a really good cleaner overall. Another thing you can use with baking soda is your laundry. Now, I've talked about this in the past video, but I'm gonna talk about it again because this sole topic is baking soda. You can use pure baking soda, just baking soda that you find at the store. I usually get Arm & Hammer baking soda because obviously that's your go-to. Like whenever you think of baking soda, at least for me anyway, I usually think of Arm & Hammer. They have tons of like other brands of baking soda. They have a ton of store brand baking soda that's a little bit cheaper. But at the end of the day, most of the time I just go with our Arm & Hammer baking soda. So you take some plain old baking soda and then you basically do your laundry like you normally do. You just put in your laundry detergent, you throw your clothes in there, but then you sprinkle a little bit of baking soda around, just put a little bit of baking soda in there too. Like maybe two or three teaspoons or like maybe half a cup of baking soda or something like that. You don't gotta use a lot. Just just basically just sprinkle a little bit of it around in the <laughs> onto the laundry. And then wash your clothes like you normally do. Or if you want to have an even better effect, then let it soak. Let it soak with the detergent and the baking soda for like at least a couple hours. I mean, personally, if you want to get the absolute best effect, I'd just let it soak in the water with the baking soda and the detergent all day. But if you don't want to wait that long, then like one or two hours is good enough. It'll definitely make even more of a difference the longer you let it soak in the baking soda. So then after you're done doing your laundry as you normally do, you will notice, you will notice, folks, that your laundry will be a lot brighter and a lot cleaner because the baking soda is great. It is great at getting rid of dirt and stains and all, and all kinds of stuff, like soap scum and all kinds of garbage. It is really great at getting that crap out of all your clothes. So if your laundry detergent on its own isn't strong enough and you want to have a little bit of a boost to really get rid of all that crap out of your clothes and you want to make them really bright and fresh looking, sprinkle some baking soda in there with your laundry. You will not regret it. I just did it again tonight when I used the Castile soap. I put baking soda in it and 
when I did the, when I washed the white clothes, the whites, I let it soak with the baking soda for like two hours. It was just a couple hours. And after I was done washing it, that baking soda really does make a difference. Like my pillowcase, my white shirt was like blinding white. Like it was paper white. It was insane. It was ridiculous how bright white it looked. Imagine if I let it soak all day. Imagine if I used even more baking soda and just let it soak all day. Like if there was like a nasty blood stain on my cl in my clothes or something like that, and I just let it soak in the baking soda all day, and then I washed it. I can guarantee you that stain would be gone, folks. So yeah, that's another really great thing to use for baking soda. An all natural, powerful, cleaner that gets rid of stains it gets rid of dirt and grime all kinds of stuff great for your laundry and to make your white clothes whiter and just to make your clothes in general look a lot brighter and cleaner and less stains i mean it's it's obviously not gonna be perfect like you'd have to wash it several times if there's like a lot of nasty stains in there and it's like really dirty you'd have to do it a few times obviously to see like a significant difference or you'd have to soak it a few times and wash it a few times. But still, me personally, if I had to choose between using stuff like bleach and Clorox and all of these other harsh chemicals to get rid of stains and to, you know, clean the laundry, personally, I would rather, I would choose baking soda over all that. Like, I've never used bleach. I've used Clorox a few times. Like, I've used OxyClean. And from my experience, all the times I used OxyClean, it really did boost the colors and it cleaned, got rid of stains pretty well. It made my white clothes look whiter and brighter. But after I used baking soda a few times, I had pretty similar results. So that's why, like with baking soda, it's one simple natural ingredient. And with bleach, it is a harsh, chemical and with oxyclean i i don't i don't even want to look at the ingredients in oxyclean damn it i don't even care what the ingredients are it's just more stupid harsh chemicals damn it and i know with baking soda it is one ingredient one high quality ingredient that has the same effectiveness as all of those other things so that's why That's why I don't want to, I don't like using bleach or any of these other harsh chemicals, all this toxic junk. I will use baking soda. And I will continue to use baking soda. Now, let's move on to more uses for baking soda. Did you know that you can use baking soda to clean off the residue and the pesticide and the wax that is on your produce. For example, you get a nice fresh bag of apples and you're worried that there might still be leftover residue from pesticides and whatever else, like some germs or bacteria on it for whatever reason. You feel like just simply rinsing it off in the water isn't good enough. You can use baking soda to clean your produce. All you do is put some baking soda into a water bottle, mix it up real good into a water bottle, spray your produce, and then just scrub the produce off lightly with a little, some sort of a scrubber, like either a clean sponge or some, um, some sort of, just some sort of a clean sponge or a clean rag or something like that. Anything that you normally use to wipe off your produce, just use that. Or you can just use your hands, just rub it around with your hands or something and then rinse it off. But the baking soda is actually pretty effective if you spray it onto your produce and then just kind of wipe it off. The baking soda will wipe off any bacteria and any residue that's left over. So that's another good use for it. Moving on, another great use for baking soda is for common colds. If you happen to be sick, oh no, I have a cold. 
one way to treat the common cold, for example, is baking soda. Now, let's get into detail about how this works. Basically, you would mix half a teaspoon of baking soda into a glass of water. Mix it really well and drink that water. And generally, you would do this about three or four times throughout the day. Just put half a spoonful of baking soda into a glass of water, stir it up really well, and then drink it. And basically drink four, three or four of those throughout the day. And then the next day, do the same thing. Drink like, I, I wouldn't drink four of them every single day. Like start out with three or four, and then the next day, drink like two or three cups of baking soda water. And then the next day, drink a couple. And then it will help you get over the cold quicker. The reason behind this is because it will raise the pH in your blood. Because pathogens generally thrive better in an acidic environment. So when you drink a lot of baking soda water, you, you're raising the pH in your blood. Now, I wouldn't recommend this if you have high blood pressure or you're on blood pressure or whatever. Don't take my word for it. This is just me vlogging about different uses for baking soda and this is one of them but basically how it works is when you drink enough of the baking soda water you dr <laughs> it'll raise the ph in your blood and essentially it makes it more difficult for germs and pathogens to reproduce in your blood so it'll give you a better chance to fight it off like per honestly i've heard of people drinking baking soda water when they had a cold, and their cold was gone in two days. Now, me personally, I haven't tried this yet because I haven't had a cold in like a couple of years, but I will be sure to experiment on this. I will test that theory because I'm not 100% on that, on like how well it works or how accurate it is, but I'm just going based off the science and like, how it works because I've always been fascinated with biology and virology and all that nonsense so I love to see how the body works and how the body reacts to different treatment and that's why with baking soda it could be a potential treatment for the common cold so if you continue to do that and you raise the pH in your blood then the acti the sickness that you have going on in your blood the pathogen will have a more difficult time to reproduce so it'll give you a better chance to fight it off because the virus will be producing way less it'll still be active in your body obviously but due to the higher alkaline environment from drinking the baking soda water it'll have more difficulty to reproduce so then it'll essentially give your body a more of a fighting chance to fight it off and build up immunity without your symptoms getting worse. Now, like I said, whenever I eventually get a cold at some point in time, I will test this to see how well it really works. As soon as I start developing symptoms like, oh damn, I'm getting a cold, I will start mixing up some baking soda water and I will start drinking some baking soda water I'll start with three to four cup and cups of the baking soda water and then the following day I'll drink about three and then the day after that I'll drink two. Just ha just spread it out throughout the day. So basically the first day just drink one and then a few hours later drink another, a few hours later drink another, a few hours later drink the final one like probably before you go to bed or something. But also be sure to stay hydrated because if you're drinking water obviously too much sodium like this is... Too much salt can dehydrate you, so like obviously be sure to be drinking other fluids too. It's kind of common sense, like when you have a cold you should be drinking plenty of fluids. Duh. Like when I get a cold, my nose is always running like crazy. So like you're losing more fluid than usual. That's why they're always saying, ooh, keep your fluids up, drink a lot of water because you can get dehydrated. So drink a lot of water and you can get better quicker. But yeah. I can't really think of any other uses for baking soda, but however, I will, I will be experimenting and making videos of all these uses of baking soda after I move. So be sure to stay tuned for those videos and don't quote me on anything that I'm saying 
This is literally just me vlogging and talking about different things you can do with baking soda. So, don't take anything I'm saying serious. Please don't take anything I'm saying serious. Do anything. Whatever you do, it is at your own risk. Oh. Anyway, that's the end of this baking soda busy video. Stay tuned for more. See ya, folks.